<laughs> Hi, everybody. I have so many new friends. I'm pretty sure it's because a few people have been mentioning me on their podcast, and I really appreciate it if that was you. And I just love making new friends. So I'm glad you're here, whether you just started following me or you've been around since the beginning, which wasn't that long ago, but that's okay too. I am going to do a separate video, this video, for Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival, and then I'll do a regular podcast probably today, but, you know, separate the two because I don't have central air, so I'll have to do this, cool the place off, and then come back. It's going to be like 90 freaking degrees outside. Hate summertime. I said it, said what I said. We'll move on. So, Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. France, my dudes. I popped my Fiber Festival cherry two weeks ago. So thanks for being my first, Maryland. So good, so good. I just wanna thank everyone. I'll talk in detail a little bit um, for hosting me and having me over and hanging out during the festival. It was just wonderful. And I can't wait till next year. I've already started planning uh, the dates and everything. All right, first off, you know, it wouldn't be a trip driving through Northern Virginia if I didn't bitch about the traffic. Listen, what the fuck, Nova? Like. You drive for five minutes and everything's fine and then everybody just stopped. No accidents, nothing wrong. We just like stopping on the highway and making it a parking lot apparently. Ridiculous. It took me five and a half hours to get what should have taken me two and a half hours. So I have learned from a friend of mine that I either need to leave before 10 a.m. or after 8 p.m. So I'll fix that next time. All right, so I got through the very long drive in the rain because it rained all weekend. Uh, and if you've followed up with uh, any of the other favorite podcasters, you'll have known that already because I'm a little bit late to the game on reporting out what happened at the Fiber Festival, but whatever. It's not taken me four months, so we're doing good. We're going doing real good. Uh, yeah, so I get to Maryland, just outside of Baltimore, and I stayed near uh, Aquila and Johnny Vo of a Lefty Nutter podcast because I wanted to be close to my friends the night before and then just drive to the festival and leave from there, which is what happened. So I check into the hotel. There's like nobody there, which felt weird. Um, and I check in, I get into my room and I'm like unpacking and trying to calm down from the really awful drive that I had had up north. And I look over on the nightstand and my hotel room was possessed and I'll tell you why. And I think I still have the video. Like the alarm clock, the minutes were going by as fast as seconds. It was freaking weird. Kind of freaked me out. Y'all, my clock is possessed. I wonder if that means that my room is haunted. Ooh. So I'm like, all right, I don't need to be part of a Stephen King movie. I'm just going to unplug the alarm clock because the light from it's going to irritate the shit out of me anyway while I'm sleeping at night. So I unplug it. That motherfucker starts beeping like seconds after I unplug it. And like, I didn't touch anything. And it's supposed to be battery operated if you unplug it. It was freaking out. So I post that and then I get a message back from my friend Dorothy uh, on Instagram and she sent me a video. I don't know if it was of, you know, like that particular night or not, but it was a video of, I think some of her friends in a hotel room where they would like stand up and a certain light would turn off and sit down and like another light would go on. It was really weird. So possessed hotel rooms are kind of a thing that weekend, I guess. 
Uh, after that, I went to Aquila and John's house, which was so much fun. This is again, Friday night. Made my way over there after I had calmed down a little bit from the drive-in and gotten settled in the hotel room and whatnot. So I park, walk up to the house, open the door, and I tripped twice on the door frame before I even got in the damn house. Like, of course I did, right? But I opened the door and in front of me is Chevis and Aquila. And I could have died from excitement. Like, and, and this was a theme the entire weekend. And I think that Barbara from F the Flame and Fiber podcast said this and a few other folks have said this, but it didn't feel like they were people that I hadn't met in person before because we've all gotten to know each other through messaging on Instagram and sharing stories on podcasts. You know, podcasts have almost become like the new letter, like writing a letter to your friend, except it's a video, which I understand the difference, obviously, but it's just like a new way for us to, instead of writing letters to our friends, we're creating these videos and talking about our lives and all the things that we have in common or, um, you know, bringing up like new things that we found that maybe our new friends would have. So, so instead of it feeling like it was somebody brand new that I'd never met before, it was like I saw, I was seeing friends that I just hadn't seen in years. We all just already knew each other and there was already these huge connections and so we immediately fell into sync. And I think it's really telling of the times that we live in now that you can meet people through social media and through YouTube or the tubes of the U that Johnny Bo calls it. I might have to steal that one, buddy. And we just, we had a time. Uh, more people showed up. I got to meet Tammy from Cinematics Games in person. I got to meet Valerie and Rebecca and just so many people. And as we're hanging out, John had gone in the basement and prepared some yarn, whatever that means. I'm sure he could tell you if you're interested. I have no idea what I was doing, but he went down, prepared some yarn, and then brought one person at a time down in the basement. That sounds really creepy and weird, but we were all creepy and weird, so it was okay. Um, <laughs> he brought us down one by one, and we all added our own splash or sprinkle of color on the skeins, and he did a recording, and I'm gonna link that video so that you can kind of see one of the cool events that we had during that weekend and the yarn turned out gorgeous it really did so I hung out there for a few hours and then finally around midnight i was like "Shit, i gotta go i i want to get up early and get to the festival early ish uh i wanted to make sure i got like a good parking spot and that i was there when other people were there that kind of thing so headed back to the hotel passed out and let's see let me check my notes because i don't want to miss anything it was such a good time oh so yeah i pull up and there is this huge field outside of the gravel parking lot i think there was a gravel parking lot spot i don't know it was a huge freaking field and there were cars everywhere when i got there holy shit, you guys Look how many cars are right here. Ah, oh, this is gonna be so much fun. But when I parked, I parked, I hate having to drive around and look for parking spaces. I would rather park in the back of the parking lot instead of having to spend 20 minutes driving around finding a close parking spot. So that's what I did. And in front of me, it's just this huge field. No cars in front of me. When I left, I couldn't even see the edge of the field. There were so many cars in front of me. And I was told it would have been busier had it been sunny outside. 
that's insane. I don't think I could have handled that this year. Like I don't, I don't go out much. I'm still trying to be relatively careful, especially now. Like I know a lot of people who are getting sick. A new wave is coming, and so it would have just been really overwhelming if it had been at its normal size or whatever. So I get, I get it, I get to the festival, I park. I get in the gates and I look around and it's just like white tents everywhere. And of course, I hadn't really made a plan other than I wanted to get things that I couldn't normally find if I went into a yarn store here at home. So I wanted to find unique things and maybe grab one or two things, like a couple skeins of yarn that I thought were really pretty. But I didn't look at the map, I didn't look at the list of vendors, none of that shit. I'd had such a crazy time, like, r leading up to that festival. I didn't have time. It's a miracle I packed underwear, you know? So, I did manage to pack underwear. I'm sure you weren't worried. Moving on, right? So. I almost stabbed myself in the mouth with my straw. We'll just, we'll just move on from there. All right. So I walk into the festival. It's like a drizzly, like misty rain. I was smart enough to remember boots, but not a raincoat. Because I, I was just wrapped up in a lot of yarn and non-super wash yarn. So I figured I'll be fine. And I was. So the first booth that I went into was, what's the name of this place? Winter's Past Farm. And they had a lot of spinning fiber. Apparently the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival is heavier on the spinning fiber than say like Rhinebeck. These are rumors, I don't know if they're true because I've never been to Rhinebeck. Maybe next year, not this year. Just, just can't, I just can't. I just can't for a lot of reasons that I'm not gonna waste time spewing out to all of you right now. Anyway, the first booth, a lot of spinning fiber, a lot of all natural yarn, and this really cool thing that I got, it is a bird's nest wreath. So it says, welcome feathered friends in spring by hanging this wreath on a tree or a bush. The thread and sheets wool will be much appre appreciated as nesting materials. Well, here's the deal. This thing is so cool. It's hanging up in my living room. Like I'm not, and I mean, I don't have a yard. I just have my porch and I don't know, the birds, I'll get them something else. They're fine. They have materials, but isn't that pretty? Like there are some um, really cool sequins in it. That was the other thing. I was like, you know, this is like, got color dye in it and sequins and stuff and I don't know if that's bad for the birds or not. I'm making up excuses to not help the birds basically because I want to keep this for myself and it's fine. So yeah this is really pretty and I will probably just walk around like that huh? I will probably put that um, on my wall somewhere. That looks cute. Now I look like I need to go to a shit Renaissance fair. Don't they sell shit like that at those? I haven't been to one in so long. Oh, that could be fun. I need to go to one of those sometime. I think I was a really young kid last time I went to one. Ew, and those turkey legs. I remember the turkey legs. Those things gross me out. They had them at the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I don't know what it is, but I see somebody walking around with a big old honking turkey leg and I almost throw up in my mouth a little bit when I see them, like, ew. Ew. Let's just leave that there. So next I bought four ounces of natural pencil roving. I have no idea what that means. I'm pretty sure that this is like, Oh, you want to see it? I could show it to you if I'm going to talk about it, right? You see that? It's really pretty. It still has like some hay and stuff in it. You can't 
see it as well. Well, I guess you can see a little bit of the brown that's in it. You can see more of the brown in person, but it's unspun wool, which I've never worked with. And I thought, you know, this could be really cool in um, this poncho slash shawl that I eventually want to make. And most, if not all the fiber has come from a local farmer that sells yarn spun from their sheep. And so I thought this could add a nice different texture to it. And I know that I've heard from the Gentle Knitters podcast, and I think from Tracy at the Grocery Girls, that you just have to be mindful of how you hold this yarn because it can come apart really easily as you're knitting it. But once it's knit, it's like super strong. So I don't have to worry about that. So I don't know how many yards this is, but I'm really excited, really excited about putting that into the poncho that I'll make one day. All right. Okay, so I'm in this booth where I got these two things make my purchases. I leave the tent, walk about two or three tents down, and I start thinking, you know, I should probably get my phone out and check and see if anyone, that's gonna get annoying, if anyone's shown up or like keep my phone close by just in case a friend that's in Maryland that wants to meet up at the festival gets here around the same time that I did, because I got there at 10. And I think a lot of the crew I hung out with the night before, um, they were still, they were pretty slow moving, which is fine. Honestly, I don't know that I'll get there as early as I did next year. I don't know, we'll see. I need to not worry about it, but uh, I got there a little too early. I just got worn out really quickly. Oh my gosh, I didn't even tell you that the whole point of this is, I'm searching my, for my phone to see if anybody else has shown up, can't find my phone anywhere, anywhere. And of course, I'm not wearing like pants with like pockets or a jacket where I can shove my phone in a pocket. So I had been pulling it in and out of my bag and I can't find my phone. It's nowhere. And I start to panic because I'm like, holy shit. I don't print out directions to get to and from places anymore. I, I don't, the only, the only phone numbers I know by heart are my parents' phone numbers. And you know, who knows, like, and how the fuck am I gonna call them? Are like pay phones even a thing? I mean, I'm like going into full like panic anxiety mode. That's what it's like in my head at least a third of the day, almost every day. So I take a few deep breaths and I'm like, okay, you don't see your phone in your bag, you've checked three times, retrace your steps, you haven't gone that far. But I remembered that I had had it when I first got into the festival. So I start walking back and lo and behold, as soon as I walk into the tent, someone's like, hey, somebody left this phone. I was like, holy shit, that's mine. Like I am my father's daughter. He loses his phone, washes it, whatever, all the time. Me too, not as much as he does which means it's gonna get worse when I get older, I guess. I don't know. So yeah, that's the first thing I did after I made my first purchase, was lose my phone. But let me tell you, what an honest group of people I was around. Like somebody was getting ready to turn my phone in so they could announce it over the speaker. At one point, they came over a loudspeaker and said um, that somebody had found like a bunch of cash by some bleacher seats and that if anybody was light some money to stop by and I'm sitting there thinking buddy aren't we all light money like <laughs> but for real like who just like finds a wad of cash and turns it in I mean I would obviously because that could be like all the cash that somebody brought to buy good things at the festival so it was just kind of nice to have like two examples of the fact that you know we might actually be among friends that day and that people are you know, super nice and trustworthy. So safe space. Knitters, they always create such a safe space. Like y'all are awesome. I mean, me too, cause I am one, but anyway, not just knitters, fiber artists in general. I should say that. Y'all know what I mean. At this point, like I found my phone, I'm still walking around in mud, getting drizzled on. 
and I turn the corner and there is this tent full of these gorgeous, gorgeous ponchos and shawls and just all like hand woven, oh my head itches, all this hand woven um, magicalness. I don't know, is that a word? Magicalness? It is now. And I, I don't know what happened. Like one minute I'm looking at all of these gorgeous hand woven things and the next I, thing I know, somebody's handing me my debit card, credit card back, whatever. Y'all, my dudes. You can see pictures of me wearing this in the festival. This is not going on my head. It is way too fucking hot. But I can post some pictures. It is just, it's got a hood. How cool is that? It's by Green Tree Weaving. I think they dye the cotton as well as hand weave it. And the wonderful soul that allowed me to purchase this piece of artwork was the one who wove it. And it has tassels. We got tassels. There's some tassels, y'all. <laughs> no. And it was so much fun wearing it around the festival. I was kind of torn because I was wearing my shawlography shawl over my wool and honey sweater. And I really, for vanity's sake, wanted to show it off because that shawl is freaking gorgeous. And I was getting so many compliments on it. Duh. But it just wasn't the day for it. So I put this on instead and I absolutely loved it. I about shit the bed the next day when I realized how much money I'd spent on it. It was like I blacked out or something, I don't know. But it was worth it. It is a beautiful piece and it'll last me the rest of my life. So I've gotten over the shell shock of that. Almost. All right, so I bought the poncho, walked around for a while and then I saw a message that Dorothy from Knit, Knot, and Weave was already walking around the festival as well. So I met up with her and gave her a big old hug and I swear half the time I was thinking this woman probably thinks I'm fucking crazy and it's like, oh my god, like who is this girl and what have I gotten myself into saying that I'd walk around with her all day. But luckily she tolerated me very well. I think about every other place we went, I was like, okay, I'm not like for real, not gonna spend any more money. And I think she knew at least there for a little while that I was lying to her. But I actually didn't do too badly. And I kind of followed the plan that I had. So um, I'll link her channel below, Knit, Knot, and Weave, because she's just an incredible human friend for life, love her dearly, and you should go check her out. So we walked around for a while and we found this booth, Ellen Cooper's Yarn Sonnets. What a great name. Um, the This is called, what's this colorway? Driftwood. Uh, I don't know, the camera's not quite doing it justice. It's a little bit more... Like the gray is a little bit more blue. There's a little bit more green in it, but, and I don't know what I did to all of these skeins. Like all this stuff has been sitting in a bag waiting for me to record. And so it's gotten a little messed up, but I loved their booth, Ellen Cooper's Yarn Sonnets. And I'm on a link, I'm going to link her website uh, in my show notes. She had some really cool stuff, really cool stuff. Amazing buttons, I know that's like, well, actually y'all are here, so you probably get as excited about buttons as the next person who goes to a Fibrous Festival. Her shit was gorgeous. She had the coolest freaking buttons. She also had this yarn that it was like different types of fiber in different types of mediums, like, 
spun together and then she had this really cool vest pattern that you could it was sort of a vest sort of poncho I guess it was beautiful it was beautiful I did not get one of those just because I knew that there was a lot more to see and I just spent like a lot of money on a freaking poncho but I highly suggest that you go check out her website again link below because she's just got a lot of really unique stuff that you don't typically see everywhere and then she does have just gorgeous beautifully wonderfully dyed yarn so i have plans for this and we'll get back to that in a second because it relates to something else that i got <sighs> do you like with this tag in the back it's like one of those raccoon hats you know, from back in the day. What the hell is that song by the Beatles? Rocky Raccoon. Mm -mm, not today. So Dorothy and I walked around for a while. We ended up going to the, one of the main, they call them barns, but it's like this big metal, sheet metal building. I guess that's what barns are made out of now. Does anybody know? That's what they called it, so that's what we're going to stick to. And there was a contest where, and this is probably normal for fiber festivals, I have no idea, but it was a really neat idea where you could submit hand spun yarn, knitted garments, shawls, there was felted artwork, it was just incredible. So you submitted your piece of art, whatever it was, that the Friday before the festival, it was judged, and then they laid out, they had everything laying out with the the ribbons and the awards and whatnot, and that was really inspiring. There was this one thing, I think it was, I think it's on either Dorothy's latest video, or she posted it on Instagram, where this 12-year-old girl, 12 years old, wove fabric, I don't know if she did anything before she wove the fabric. Like, I don't know if she dyed the colors or spun the yarn or anything. Um, but she wove this fabric, sewed it into, I think it was like, like a coat, a really long coat, and then had a leather belt that she had made and embroidered a cardinal on a tree branch on the back of this belt. Unbelievable. Like. I can make a shawl. <laughs> I can sort of spin some yarn and maybe sew a bag. And this little shit's over here making coats and embroidering leather. I think it was leather. I'm doing such a great job. I have no idea what she did before she wove it. I don't remember what the belt was made out of. I do remember that the embroidery was a cardinal and some greenery. Like I'm pretty sure. Y'all just give up on me now. Just give up on me now. All that to say, the fiber contest was really cool. It was really neat to see even just the different spun fiber. And in that same barn, there was an area where people had their spinning wheels set up. And so I got to see a walking wheel. That was super cool. I have a video of that. I'll probably drop it at the end. Uh, just in case you're interested in watching that to see what a walking wheel is. It's friggin' huge and I want one so badly, but I don't have the room for that shit. So maybe one day, maybe one day. All right. So at this point in the day on Saturday, like we got some food and I was kind of tired of walking at this point. But um, we were waiting. It was getting close to when they had the podcasters meet up. So Dorothy and I figured out where that was supposed to happen. And there was another barn next to the one that we went into that had a lot more vendors. And we got so distracted. Like, I had to pee and I needed food, like, right then. I got distracted. Dorothy didn't get distracted. I distracted us for food, bathroom, dropping shit off at the car because I was really tired of carrying stuff around. 
And then we decided to go to the main barn and like look around before the podcasters meetup happened. So we're walking through and all of a sudden it was like in a movie where the crowd parted and the lights dimmed and a spotlight was on the most beautiful group that ever did walk through the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. Maryland, y'all hear that? It's my country coming out. Can you tell us some country co-workers that pull that out of me every once in a while? Anyway, it was just like a movie. And walking towards me, I mean, not specifically walking towards me, walking in my general direction was the royal family of yarn. Lola Bean Yarn Co. and the GG crew all together walking like the most badasses of badassery through this festival. It was a beautiful scene. I spot them and I make a beeline. And I think Adela was the first person I saw actually. And then I saw the orange, right? I walk up to them and Adela says, hey. And then I black out. I met Her Royal Highness Adela Colvin Beyonce of Yarnia, the Yarniverse. And I don't remember what I said to her. I'm pretty sure I gave her a hug but couldn't tell you for sure. What is wrong with me? Like off with my head. I just met Yarn Royalty and I don't remember what I said to her. I was so starstruck, I blacked out. It was crazy. And then, so then I started hugging everybody. I hugged Shelby. Jimmy gives the best hugs. I got to meet Jimmy the model. Who else was there? It was a big, beautiful crowd. Let me tell you what. And we all get in, we all get in to take a picture. And of course I'm cheesing like it's all the Christmas mornings of my childhood all at once. Cause that's how magical it was. And then Gigi jumps in the photo and I, I just, it was just, the festival was so serendipitous because it was like every time I thought I want to see this person or I want this thing to happen. It just happened. And so the crowd dispersed a little bit and Gigi was still there. And I was like, Gigi, there's something I would like to tell you. It just, she is always so vulnerable and real. And I had had such a bad couple of weeks on and off before that festival. And like the things that she says in her Monday emails or in her videos on Instagram and in her podcasts, they just help me so much. And, you know, I had heard her say in the past that, you know, it's just me. People get so excited. It's just me. And all I really wanted to tell her is you just being you is a big deal. There aren't a lot of people that are authentic and real out in this world. And it's a really big deal when you find somebody like that. But because I am who I am and I had had the two weeks that I had and I was already on this emotional high, I just fucking sobbed all over her. Oh, it was so embarrassing. Like, seriously. I'm in front of the other queen of the Arniverse and I can't stop crying. She took it very well. And she was all beauty and grace, which I'm sure surprised nobody. And uh, it, it was just an amazing experience. And by the way, speaking of Gigi, her daughter, Shelby, has a podcast and I think an online bookstore. So you should check her out too. I'll link below. Like, I think I posted this in my Instagram stories today. Seriously, my reading list has gone to the next level. Just watching her and getting all of the book suggestions that she has. Um, oh my gosh, I can't stop burping. So I would definitely, definitely recommend, highly recommend her channel as well. And I think she's trying to get to a thousand subscribers. So if y'all could just, you know, go over there and do that that'd be great because she deserves it and you know what you do too you deserve to hang out with Shelby on YouTube
So after making probably an ass out of myself in front of Yarn Royalty, I learned that the podcast meetup is just outside of the main barn. So I go out there and it's just Johnny, not just, it's Johnny, Aquila, Hazel, Chevis, two unsuspecting poor souls that probably just wanted to have a quiet time in the festival and we all show up and Dorothy and I. And we hang out there for a while and I'm starting to think, you know what? I've been here for, so at this point it was almost two o'clock. I got to the festival at 10. I was just tired, y'all. I was tired. And more people started showing up for, well, okay, so here's the funny thing. We're sitting there and I guess they decided to have the podcasters meet up. The, where they used to do the shearing competition. So people are walking up and they're like, is this where they're doing the sheep shearing? We're like, this is the podcaster meetup. They're like, oh, well, do you know where the sheep shearing is? I'm like, what makes you think that we have any idea what we're doing? I mean, we're here for a purpose and I don't have, you know, a festival attendant pinned to my shirt. But it was just funny because it was like every other person that walked up to us. Um, ask that question and you know more and more people sh started showing up for the meetup and I started thinking I just don't think I could people anymore like I'm covered in mud which actually I don't care and it's raining which I don't care about that either but it was just all a lot and it was all a lot of good like 99% of it minus the drive through Nova and I was just ready to come home. I wanted to be home with my kitty and watch movies and knit and read and just chill out. And I wanted Sunday, which was Mother's Day the next day, I wanted to be rested to go hang out with my mom, you know? And uh, so yeah, so it was very difficult to leave, but I decided this is it, I'm done. And I get up to start saying goodbye to people and I hear, I hear Liz's voice from the Black Knitter podcast. And I hear Chevis go, yeah, I think there's somebody here that kept saying they wanted to meet you. And I was like, it's me. And all of a sudden I had like all this energy again. I didn't even ask Liz if I was, if like it was okay for me to give her a hug. I'm pretty sure I just attacked her. Um, and she, also was full of grace and just let me fall all over her and oh gosh I just I wanted to like sit and hang out with her but it wasn't really the place to have you know there are just tons of people everywhere and they want to meet like the famous podcasters and stuff and get to know each other and so it wasn't the place and I was over it so I figured you know what another time I will have another opportunity to hang out with her and, you know, maybe she'll be all right with my version of crazy. And it'll happen. It'll happen. I'm determined. She's, she's such an inspiration to me that I need to meet her again one day. So, look out, ladies. I'm coming for ya. That was really creepy. I mean, in like a non-creepy, super respectful and consensual way, I want to hang out with you. All right, I'm gonna stop making that weird. So I'm at Liz and then, yeah, I drove home. The drive home wasn't nearly as bad. It probably only took me about three and a half hours. It was in the rain, but that's all right. Uh, and it was just an incredible experience. I feel like if I had filmed this a day or two after I got back, you'd be getting a much better video. Some of the adrenaline has worn off, like most of it has worn off, but yeah, I'm hooked for life on the Maryland Sheep and Wool Festival. I contemplated riding back this year, but there's just too much going on in October. And the tax man visited my mailbox last week and told me I have to pay personal property, personal property taxes on my car, apparently. And I'm like, you know, I just need to be a responsible adult for the rest of the year. 
because going to Rhinebeck is even more expensive. It's a long drive. If I drive, if I fly, it's a couple hundred bucks and you got to find a place to stay and da 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 da. So, 99.999% sure that I'm not going to Rhinebeck. But that's okay. That's just this year. I'll I'll start saving up for next year and I'll make sure that I can hit, you know, both festivals and I figured out some tricks next time I might I might do a little bit more research on some of the vendors and look at the map and plan my timing of like when I show up and maybe I'll even go like both days for like one day I just wander around by myself and check things out and randomly run into people if it happens and then the other day maybe a little bit more structured to see like certain you know folks that are going to be there because it really is mostly about the people like walking around and seeing the vendors and whatnot was amazing obviously I love the stuff that I got but it was mostly about the people and so yeah next year I'll probably go to both events because there are just so many people I'd love to see and I'd love to meet in person that I'm not going to be able to this year and that's all right because not only that but the year after that so in 2024 I turned 40 and I got big plans for that shit so I kind of need to be a big girl and save up for that too and I think that's an important thing that I'm starting to learn about this community is there's a lot of enabling and I think it's wonderful because we're supporting small businesses and allowing people to make art for a living, but it also means I got to spend a lot of money to do that and I just can't keep dropping the amount of money that I'm dropping on yarn because the other thing is I don't know where the fuck I'm going to keep putting all this shit. It doesn't even fit in the shelves that I've got in my art room anymore. So it's time. It's time to slow it down a little bit. I'm glad all of you stopped by. Hopefully this was a fun one to watch. I certainly enjoyed, you know, myself at the festival. If I met you and I forgot to mention you, I'm really sorry. I just... I didn't take notes. <laughs> I did not take notes and my memory is terrible when it comes to names and that's the only reason you're get not getting named right now and uh, you can yell at me if you need to. It's fine. Uh, look below for show notes and how to get in touch with me if you want. I gotta go because I'm at risk of just going on and on about nonsense to the point where it's not funny, it's just annoying. So I'm gonna take a break, cool off a little bit, record part two, technically episode 10, and I'll see you soon, bye. I'm such an asshat. <laughs> One of the coolest things that happened, I didn't even talk about. We were sitting at the podcast meetup, most of us were just eating and trying to recover from walking around in the rain all day and having to like talk to a lot of people and Tammy from Cinematics Games pulls out her yarn haul and she had gone to uh sure see cat designs their booth and the yarn she pulled out was gorgeous and I was practically drooling on it which is probably part of the reason why she did this but um she said, you can have one. And I about fell off the bench. I was like, what? And I started to argue with her and I'm trying to get better about like, if somebody tells you here, this is for you, just take it. If somebody gives you a compliment, just take it. Don't argue with them. It's not their problem that you struggle to accept gifts and compliments. Just let people do it. So I did. And she gave me this gorgeous, 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 gorgeous skein of yarn from Shirsty Cat. So my plan is to take my driftwood yarn from Ellen Cooper's Yarn Sonnets and make some sort of shawl with the three of these. I thought that the muted colors 
with this sort of like really pretty enchanted um enchanted colored yarn I don't think that's a thing this is called Lake of Shining Waters so yeah I thought that these three would look really cool together in a really big triangle shawl so that was the thing I needed to add in I'm sorry Tammy that was the part I was most excited sharing about when I was talking about my haul and I forgot about it all right now I'm done bye that are continuously wrapping the yarn around mm -hmm. and you're you know, able to just keep spinning. This is basically glorified drop spindle, which means I, I just have a spindle here that's driven by this band. And so to get twist, I have to put the thread right on here on the tip uh -huh. so that it's constantly trying to wind it on, but slipping off so that it becomes stationary. Right. So that I have something to draft against, right? So when it comes right out there, it goes pop, 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 pop. So you'll see it's no longer drawing it on, but I'm not unraveling it either, which is what happens out here. Right. So if my hand's here, it winds it on. If my hand's out here, I just pull it off. But what I need is it to be stationary so I can draft against it. If I get it right there in that 45 degree sweet spot, it holds it still. Twist comes up just like on your wheel. And I pull out my long draw. And I make a whole new length of yarn. Wow, that is so cool. And I'm going as far as I can. I stop, back off just a little, wind it on, bring it back out to the tip. Make another length, wind it all, back and forth. So that's why they call it a walking wheel, because I walk forward and backwards to make the yarn.